LC Piers, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we're just going to give it a, uh, another minute just to let you viewers at home just to tie in. Glenn, very excited to have you here. Happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Maximizing your results in 2021. I think we all need to really just reset after last year, start over from scratch. I know you're definitely going to help give some good strategies to that. For sure. Yeah. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, I start to see some people coming in, so it's great. I look forward. Hopefully we get some really good questions. For those of you that have tuned in already, please send over questions. We've already gotten a bunch uh, for Glenn to answer at the end of this. We will, of course, go through all questions. We'll go through details of everything that way. So anything that you guys have questions about during the presentation, beforehand, that you want us to touch on ahead of time, uh, we'd love to hear it that way. So keep them coming. Very excited. Uh, can't wait. Glenn, any opening words for these guys before I truly make the intro for you? I'm going to try to answer all the questions to the best of my ability in a general sense because everybody's going to be a little bit different. So if there's a specific question, I can definitely answer that for, for the person, you know, uh, on a Tuesday when I'm in office. But cool. for right now, I'm going to answer them generally. So it cool. applies to as many people as possible. Cool. Well, I'm excited. Uh, why don't we just get started? I think 730 right on the dot. I see a bunch of you guys signing up here yet again, just to repeat it again. Any questions that you have, please send it in. Very excited. We're going to answer everything at the end here. I just want to make the introduction. My name is Dave Wegerson. I'm the club director here at Chelsea Pierce, Connecticut. Um, very excited to have a special guest here, our performance dietitian, Glenn Tobias. Um, welcome. I, I'm very excited to get you in front of our members, answering some questions, truthfully maximizing our results in 2021. I know that's the title, that's the strategy, that's the goal. Um, so yeah, I look forward to getting you in front of them. So why don't you give us a little bit of a background on yourself and then, uh, we can kind of move forward. Sure. Uh, I have been in the nutrition industry, uh, doing performance nutrition for about 26 years. Uh, most recently I've been with the Boston Red Sox for the last four years. And before that I was four years with the New York Jets. So in terms of athletes, I've worked with uh, a lot of universities, you know, Seton Hall, I've worked with their basketball team, baseball team, and um, work in Manhattan with a lot of different athletes and regular people just trying to decrease some body fat, gain some muscle. So uh, this is just something that I've been doing before they had a term for it, before the sports performance dietitian was a thing. <laughs> I, I've, I've been doing it for a while now. So it's it's been a lot of fun. Love working with athletes. I find that working with the athletes is actually sometimes even easier than working with the average person because they get paid to do it. There's a, there's a need, there's a drive. Sometimes working with the average person to motivate them is harder. It's harder. So uh, we're all dying to know at home, especially with, you don't really meet somebody that works with professional athletes on a daily basis every single day. So what's really the difference of it, working with just an everyday person versus that professional athlete that needs to go out a couple times a week, every Sunday to just perform at their best? What's the difference? It's, it's the why. Like I was saying, the professional athlete, that's what they get paid to do is to perform. So we really want to make sure that they're performing optimally. And if I can give them just a little bit more, that can be the difference between winning and losing. Uh, but to motivate the average person, sometimes it's harder because they've been doing what they're doing mm -hmm. for years, decades, and I have to now change them slowly over time, not too drastically, so it's not going to be too shocking to the system, because mm -hmm. everyone wants to know, like, what's the perfect thing? Like, all right, just tell me what I need to eat, tell me how much I need to drink, tell me how much I need to... It doesn't work like that. We have to see what you're doing, and then we move you slowly, whereas an athlete, listen, they want to win the World Series, they want to win the Super Bowl. They just do what you they, what, what's needed. So I find that a big difference. Right. So little reason why we chose maximize your results in 2021. We've done a couple things here. We've done a diet debate, picking some very popular common diets that we just really broke down the granular level just to see 
what is the pros, what is the cons of it. Uh, we've also done nutrition one-on-one. We've done a little bit of everything, but really focusing on results. Going into January, 2021, we're ready to go. We're excited. We want to get results. We want to get to our goals that way. Uh, that's, I know, yet again, your specialty. Really excited to dig into it with you. Um, I don't know if you just want to take it from here. Sure. Let's go. We'll do it Perfect. together. So let's talk about performance nutrition in general. So everybody has coaches, whether it's a trainer uh, for, your, for your sport, uh, multiple positional trainers. Those are all energy out coaches, and that's great. I'm the energy in coach because they can only get out of you what I help put into you. So that's critical is that energy in. And that's how I want people to look at it is I'm, I'm the coach. I'm not the food police. It's not like, oh my God, I can't believe you're eating pizza. So I don't rank, rate you, rank you, or judge you. I just see where you are and then I move you towards better. Um, the athletes have to perform at a high level. And you know a lot of people don't think of themselves as athletes, but anybody who trains with you, Dave, they're an athlete. Mm -hmm. They may not be competitive in anything and that's okay, but you are an athlete because you're moving and you want to feel better and stronger. So it, it goes in both. We're, we're, basically it's one equation. Mm -hmm. I'm the energy in and you're the energy out coach. And that's how we get people results, athletes, regular people, it doesn't matter, but that's how the results are, are, are gotten best. So you need to eat properly and you have to move properly, but you have to look at, the, the, the body, you think of it as a race car and you want to put race gas in, you want to get the best performance out of it. Yeah, so. I love what you're saying in regards to that. Honestly, before we met, I'd never heard the term energy in, but it makes perfect sense to get to your goals, to get maximum results. You do need to have, I don't want to say a full team, but it needs to be a full program that you're following. It's not just a one trick pony. It's not like let's change one little thing and then we're going to get maximal results right there. You can so, work out you can work out perfectly, but if you don't feed the machine adequately, you're going to get somebody get lightheaded and pass out or mm -hmm. work out really hard, but don't, don't grow and repair properly because they didn't eat right after the workout. Mm -hmm. So there's so much involved that we work together. Uh, I think eating and eating. Uh, yeah. And I don't think the everyday person actually views himself as an athlete. Literally, if you're, if you're working out, if you have a set goal in mind, like you're an athlete in one way, shape or form. So Really taking that mentality, going right into this. I think that's great. I love it. I've, like I said, never heard it before, never seen it put that way, but very, very impressed. It definitely made an impact on me ever since you told me about that, that first time we met. That's, that's great. great. That's great. And one of the things that I deal with is rhythmic eating. And I mm -hmm. think rhythmic eating is, is critical. And that's eating by the clock, mm -hmm. not, oh, I'm hungry, I should eat. So it's about planning it ahead. So you've heard the uh, expression, or the, everyone always says, only eat when you're hungry, right? You've heard that? Yeah. That's literally one of the worst pieces of advice ever given. Because when you get hungry, really hungry, is when you crave. And what do you crave? High fat, high salt, mm -hmm. fast foods, things that are quick and easy. Mm -hmm. No one ever craves, oh man, I'm starving. I got to steam some cod. No, that, that doesn't happen. So my point is, you have to rhythmically eat so you're never very hungry. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. Great. So um, there it is right there. Only eat when you're hungry. That is incorrect. That is not the way I think it should be done. Mm -hmm. The be benefits of rhythmic eating, it says you're not going to be hungry. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have cravings. So typically you have willpower when you're full. But willpower is a finite amount of energy that you can give to it. But mm -hmm. eventually hunger will always win. So I don't want you hungry. So mm -hmm. if you're constantly eating, we take the hunger out of the game. You're going to have stable blood sugar. So your mm -hmm. energy output is going to be more consistent. You're going to feel better. A lot of people will tell me, oh, I started Atkins or keto and I have, I have better energy. I feel better. It's not that they feel better. It's, it's the first time maybe in their whole life that their blood sugars are stable. They're mm -hmm. low, but they're stable. So yeah. that's really uh, suboptimal. I want to give it to you so you're your, your blood sugars are ready to go. You can work out better, stronger. You're not going to be hangry. Everyone's been hangry, hungry, angry. Everybody has been at one point or time. Then you eat too much too quickly. And then you want to lay on the couch and that's that. You pull the plug, it's <laughs> over. So also eating more frequently, you have that amino acid pool that's up and, and full. And that's going to aid in lean body mass, lean body mass <laughs> growth and repair. And yeah. that's critical. So I always tell people, try a three hour beat. So rhythmic eating beats. We start on a three hour beat, see how that works. Some people will go to a four hour beat. Some people, go, I have 
uh, a client right now uh, in Abu Dhabi, and she's eating every uh, two hours. No. Because that does, that's better for her. She just feels better doing it. So again, everything being individualized for the person, we have to figure out when you're going to be training because mm -hmm. you have to eat before and after. What's the most important meal of the day? Uh, typically breakfast is what I says breakfast. that. And yeah. I, think the, I think the cereal company started that. But the, really <laughs> the one is the, the meal they have right after they've seen you. Hmm. Right after you have trained, mm -hmm. the most important meal is post-workout. And a lot of people neglect it. Yeah. So that's something we have to work on. Mm -hmm. So what does performance nutrition deal with on a regular basis? So food and hydration, critical. Uh, and in my world, there's no such thing as a bad food. Mm. I don't like the term bad. Uh, I ate pizza, I was bad. Or I had ice cream, I was bad. Or it's bad for me. It's not. I always say, I always do this. Ready, Dave, what, what's a food that you would think is bad for you? Like what off the top of your head? Pizza. Burgers. All right. So if you don't eat for two and a half weeks and I give you a whole pizza, is it good for you or bad for you? No. It's really good for you. Food. It's going to prevent you from dying. So my yeah. point is, it's how much and when. That's mm -hmm. what's critical. So mm -hmm. if you can't think of food as bad, you could think of certain foods maybe not appropriate for your goal. I get mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So we'll deal with that too. Sleep. It all starts with sleep. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna get into uh, sleep a little bit later in, in this, uh, but I wanted to bring it up. Supplements, because mm -hmm. nine out of 10 things that you're reading about supplements are ads mm -hmm. and they're not science. Yeah. They just want you to buy them. So mm -hmm. I go with the conservative um, supplement recommendation. Mm -hmm. I, I like MSF certified for sport. Mm -hmm. That is a third party that tests the products. Uh, in Major League Baseball, that's the only kind of product we can even give the, the athletes. So. If it's third-party tested, I know what's on that label, is in that product, and I feel comfortable signing my name to it because I don't know who made it. I don't know where they made it. I don't even know if there's any product in it. I'm not taking anybody's word for it. Uh, we deal with body composition. So I, everyone always says, oh, I want to lose five pounds. I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to lose, and, and it's really, no, you don't. You mm -hmm. want to really worry about your body composition because if you gain two pounds of lean body mass, but you lose two pounds of fat, the scale says you haven't changed and people will think, oh, that's a failure. That's a four pound weight shift. I deal in weight shift. That's mm -hmm. a huge win. You're going to look and feel very different, even though the scale says nothing. You could actually gain weight. What if you gain three pounds of lean mass, only lose two of fat? The scale says you're up one. You're up one of lean mass. The more muscle you have, the more fat you burn. That's gold. So when people wake up in the morning and weigh themselves, I always say you're collecting data and you don't know how to react. So if you woke up, the average person wakes up and they get on the scale in the morning and they're higher in weight, most people will be upset. And I'm telling them, wait, you just had a session with Dave yesterday. Mm -hmm. You're building lean body mass. If it's lean mass, you should be psyched. Yeah. And on the other side of that same coin, if you wake up in the morning and you've lost weight, you'd be like, yes. But mm -hmm. if you lost lean body mass, that's not advantageous for your goal. So if you stopped eating for two weeks, you say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not bothering with any of this stuff. I want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. You will lose weight every single day over those two weeks because you're not eating. But what's going to leave you, muscle or fat? Yeah, I'm most likely going to lose muscle. You're going to lose muscle. Because yeah. muscle burns calories and fat just kind of lays there. So the body's going to dump what's burning all the calories because you're not taking in any and it wants to live. So it's at the end of the two weeks, you say, okay, I didn't eat. You are lighter. Mm -hmm. you are by percentage a lot fatter yeah. and you look and feel terrible. So that's two weeks of suffering to look worse and feel worse. Yeah. And I think that ties a lot into what we were talking about before maximizing our true results. It's just, it's going to be a full team effort. Um, nutrition, absolutely important, absolutely amazing energy in, um, but the overall just strength training, cardio, having that nice little balance between everything. Um, so it works within our everyday lifestyle, especially now it's going to have to be sustainable. It's not going to be working out very, very hard for one week. And then I'm going to take three weeks off yeah. diet exactly the same way. It's not, I'm going to eat healthy for one day. And then I don't know what's going to happen after that one. Nothing we, happens in a day. Nothing you know. happens in a day. You're right. Nothing. It's what you continually will do. People are always like, can I lose 30 pounds in 30 days? I'm like, if you can come back tomorrow, 30 pounds heavier, the answer is yes, <laughs> but you can't. Um, just real quick. The other things to avoid for optimization, 
are hunger, being tired, and thirsty. You should not be any of those three things. If you wake up in the morning and feel like you were hit by a truck, something's wrong. If you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Thirst kicks in at about a 2 to 3% water loss, and eye-hand coordination, strength, and concentration are decreasing at a 1% loss. So before you're thirsty, your performance is already going down. That's not good. And we already talked about hunger, why I really don't want to get too hungry. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people do like an intermittent fast and they, they lose a little bit of weight at the beginning, but the body realizes, hey, I'm not getting in uh, food early in the day, I'll make it up later. And then they gain, most people will gain their weight back later if, it's, if they're unregulated in terms of eating. So let's just talk about really quick, the myth of weight loss that everyone thinks they want to lose weight. Nobody wants to lose weight unless you're a professional fighter trying to get day of fight. You have to weigh in for Like I work with uh, UFC fighters. I've done that in the past. You got to get them to weigh a certain weight. Very important. Nobody will walk up to a person and say, how much do you weigh? They will say, hey, you look great. So mm -hmm. that's the difference. We're going to deal with body fat percentage. It's what you're made up of. The more muscle you have, mm -hmm. it weighs. But a pound of muscle is, like, is dense. Think of it like a pound of iron. But a pound of fat takes up a lot of space, like a pound of feathers would. Mm -hmm. Pound is a pound. We all know that. But if you have more dense pounds, you're going to look leaner, trimmer, and feel better and stronger. That's what we want to do. I don't care what you weigh. And most people don't either. If you, know, if you have a, a gentleman who comes in with a 40-inch waist, which is a high risk for heart disease, and I get him to a 36, but he doesn't lose any weight, you know how fantastic that is? That means he gained a ton of lean body mass. And he looks and feels better than ever. So, so like I said, you can gain weight and shrink in size, and that freaks people out because people think the scale is their barometer for success, and it's not. So, not all pounds are created equally. So, what type of time frame are you looking for? Like, for I'm not saying that particular transformation, but like when people are looking to hit goals, yet again, maximize the results, like what type of time frames do you think that they should kind of put in place to achieve those goals? Well, in my world, a half a pound of fat loss a week is considered good, and a one pound of fat loss a week is considered excellent. And a lot of people say, well, that's terrible. Listen, if you lost 52 pounds of fat in a year, most people would be dead. So it, it takes time to lose the fat. You can't lose the 30 pounds in 30 days that, those are gimmicks. That's a sales thing. That's not real. But so I can have you lose weight because I can dehydrate you. So that's what a lot we do with a lot of fighters. You know, we can pull the carbs out, do a keto kind of thing where you're going to intramuscularly dehydrate. Mm -hmm. But that's not optimal for performance. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And I guess today is maximizing your performance, maximizing your results. That's a true focus right there. I like Absolutely. It. And let's go just quickly through a a typical sample day of like a rhythmic eating, just so people get an understanding of what I mean. So if breakfast is at nine, great. Lunch is at 12. The meal that nobody eats is dunch. That's three o'clock. <laughs> it's critical because everyone gets hungry three, four o'clock and, and their energy tanks and then they snack. What's a good snack food? A hundred calorie pack of some kind of junk? Mm -hmm. No, how about a meal? So that intercepts dinner at six, It'll be smaller. You're not going to be hangry. Your significant other is going to be very happy that you're not hangry. Mm -hmm. And then supper at nine, people are like, whoa, 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 I can't eat after six. I don't know where that comes from. It, if you typically crush ice cream after dinner and mm -hmm. then you stop doing that, I see why that's a, a big benefit. But typically, if you ate at six, by nine, you need more fuel. And then you go to sleep. I, I want a higher fat meal at the nine o'clock mark. So it slowly leaves your stomach and helps growth and repair overnight. And that's gonna also help you not be hungry for breakfast. Again, keeping that hunger. So a lot of people do the intermittent fasting, you know, eight, uh, 16, and I'm more of a 12, 12. Mm -hmm. I think that, that works best. Uh, most about people eat three times a day, and I think that's really for prison. Yeah. Talking about performance and maximize your results. I got a lot of questions about like, optimal times of eating versus optimal times of working out. Sure. And again, being in the fitness industry, I've heard anything from first thing in the morning, right as soon as you roll out of bed to working out at night, right before supper. So you're making sure you get some calories in after your workout. Any recommendations at all for the viewers? Yeah, at home? Sure. I definitely don't recommend uh, fasted working out. Uh, you don't race a car without gas in the tank. You're going to need to fuel up before you go in. People say, well, you burn a higher percentage of fat. 
with low blood sugar, you're not going to have personal bests. You're not going to be as strong for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a higher probability of, uh, you know, getting lightheaded or passing out. Yeah. So I recommend people to work out whenever they will continue to do it mm -hmm. and then work their meals around that. So if it's, if you're going to work out at, at four o'clock, you had dunch of three, all right, maybe dunch should be a little bit lower in fat to get it out of your belly a little quicker. Mm -hmm. If you're done at four, then I'm going to give you a post-workout. It doesn't count as a meal. It's a post-workout meal at like 401. And then you'll have your dinner at six, mm -hmm. for example, but everybody's going to be a little bit different based on what they do for a living, where, where the gym is, mm -hmm. a million different uh, parameters you have to look at. But whatever you will continue to do, there's no better, there's no best. The, the best, do it consistently. What's most beneficial like after your workout? Like I, I've always you know, working, as long as I've been working out, it's been make sure you get some type of food or protein um, within 30 minutes, 45 minutes of your, uh, your workout that way. Is that beneficial? Like, is that optimal? It's funny. It's funny that you say that, but at post-workout, it's actually more important to get carbohydrate in than it is protein. Huh. So you need a three to one ratio, four to one ratio carbs to protein. Hmm. If you just take in, I, I just worked out. Somebody said, I have four scoops of whey, pro whey protein. All that whey powder, all that protein is going to get broken down and used for energy because your body needs to restore the glycogen that you just spent. It needs that energy back, the blood sugar, the liver glycogen, the muscle glycogen. That's what's critical for the body. Hmm. So you need the carb. And then you need the protein. So like, for example, post-workout, I like uh, a scoop of whey powder in skim milk mm -hmm. and a banana. Mm. Or, maybe, or maybe a scoop of whey powder, some tart cherry juice. Great, you're getting the sugar, I'm getting the protein, but you don't, you don't want a lot of fat because I want it out of the stomach as fast as possible to get to the muscles for, for the growth and repair. Mm -hmm. Then the next meal, the dinner would be a standard protein, fat, carb, uh, meal and we we'll think of the meal we we'll think of your stomach like a furnace and i'm trying to build the perfect fire carbohydrates burn like paper very quickly protein are the sticks a little slower fat are the logs even slower so to build the perfect fire you need paper sticks and logs you need carbohydrate protein and fat everyone's in the 80s everyone was scared of fat could eat fat mm -hmm. not in the 80s and now everyone's scared of carbohydrates and you can't eat bread yeah bread i think is called the staff of life so well, just to kind of just jump right in there, got a great question. Um, Andrew sure. at home watching um, questions, plant protein versus whey protein, any type of recommendations, differences that you want to explain to the members at home? Sure. If you are a vegetarian or vegan and you want to avoid uh, animal product, there's nothing wrong with um, a plant-based protein. A lot mm -hmm. of great companies make them. Um, I work with quite a few. But in terms of protein, not all proteins are created equal. So the higher the biological value, the better or more powerful the protein is. So you can think of it as the law of the legs. The fewer the legs, the better the protein. So right now, whey powder is, is 104. But then you have egg is 100. Then you have fish. So they still have no legs. Then you got to go to two legs and you got to get chicken and turkey. And then you go to four legs and beef and pork. And then all the animal and plant-based, I mean, all the plant-based is, is under that. A lot of the plant-based proteins are amino acid enhanced because mm -hmm. they are, uh, their biological value is so low. So a lot of them have to be augmented. Like a pea protein is typically amino acid enhanced. So if you're not a vegetarian or vegan, then I would recommend a whey powder, casein if you want to use that, or egg protein, that's all good. Well, thank you. Great. So, um, another question from Arlene here. Seems like this slide is bringing a lot of questions here. Um, do you suggest a protein shake before the gym if you prefer early morning workouts so they're not eating on an empty stomach? They're not working out on an empty stomach? Yeah, well, suggesting if they're working out early in the gym. Arlene uh, seems to be an early bird. Love those early birds. Get that workout in. Mm -hmm. um, but prefer to get a protein shake beforehand so they're not working out on that empty stomach. I think a banana would be sufficient. Typically a banana, I recommend have the banana go in, blood sugar's up, it's got some starch. I like bananas that are more uh, green to yellow, not yellow to brown, because I want the higher starch content to get you through your workout a little bit better. But I realize as the week goes on, they, they change. So you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of people ask me like, you know, 
what, what they think I'm going to give them lists of foods to eat, what to mm -hmm. avoid. And I tell people, the what is more up to you. I deal with the how much and the when. So you tell me what you want for breakfast. Because a lot of people always say, oh, what should I eat? And I always say, listen, you should probably have some sardines. And they go, oh, that's gross. I'm like, so then don't ask me. Because it's a great food that nobody's eating. But my mm -hmm. point is, tell me what you want to eat. We'll make it work. I can adjust it in terms of protein, fat, and carb, portion, timing. I can make it work. But I can't lame off 437 things that you don't like. That's just not the way to do it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important. Like on the last thing on this slide, no one likes to be told. So it's like, I don't want to tell you what to eat for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Let's make deals. Mm -hmm. So will you eat this? Will you eat that? Can you drink this? Can you go to sleep at this time? I ask you. My job is then hold you accountable to that. Mm -hmm. But I don't like to tell you. So I know just being in the fitness industry, popular trends, um, macronutrients, and just percentages of to macro as to macronutrients, very popular. Um, still to this day in the past, maybe a little bit more prior to some of these other diets that have come out here. Um, if you, those of you that don't know at home, macronutrients, proteins, carbs, fats, basically what we just went over here. Um, how, like, what's your opinion on some base ones that are maybe like a 40, 30, 30, 40% protein, 30% carb, 30% fat. Like what's your take on those? I think the 40 is the carbohydrate, the oh, 30 carb. protein, 30 fat. That can work. That, that's a, I mean, if you're going to pick one of these things to try, that can work because it's going to help stabilize your blood sugar, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit high in fat for some people and not enough carbohydrate to, to fuel their workout or make them feel full. I mean, a lot of, I mean, you've eaten a salad before and your belly is full, but you're not satisfied. You want, you want something else. You want that rice or pasta or potato because your body's not satisfied. You're full, but it's a different feeling. So I work with the athlete, the client, the patient, mm -hmm. and I adjust protein fat carb ratios per meal for maximum energy output okay. per person. It may change. I mean, it can, it, everybody burns their their paper sticks and logs a little bit differently. So mm -hmm. we have to adjust accordingly. Yeah, well, great, thank you. So let's see here. We need lean body mass, that is critical. Without it, I mean, there's something called sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle loss and fat gain. So as we get older, Muscle goes away, fat comes on. We have to fight that. We fight that in the gym. Apologize. Building, <laughs> building that lean body mass, working with a trainer, hitting the gym, critical, critical. Cardio, important for burning uh, calories, but lean, lean body mass is critical, and you need to do that weight training. Um, if you don't eat enough, you're going to lose the lean body mass. And you get like we talked about earlier, and by percentage, you'll get fatter. And that's really not your goal. So I think it's critical uh, to have the eating and the exercise go together because they, they, they are joined. You can't, you can't work out a bad diet and you can't increase lean body mass without fatiguing the muscles. So mm -hmm. you need everything and you need to fuel those muscles properly. Talk a little bit about hydration. A lot of people take, I, I recommend scheduling your, your drinking. Don't wait for your thirst to trigger it. Mm -hmm. Have a certain amount of water that you want to drink at each meal. If you're going to do the rhythmic eating and you're going to eat the five times a day. So then if, if you don't drink much water and you drink at least eight ounces at each one of those meals, that's a win. That's a win. Mm -hmm. That's 40 ounces of water. Um, some people who are not really sure, take your weight in pounds, divide it by two. So half your weight in pounds, that may be too much at the beginning, and I get that. So that's why we move up slowly. Um, uh, I have a lot of the athletes weigh themselves before and after um, strength training, before and after conditioning, what have you. So then I know how much they're drinking during because how much weight you lost. And then for every pound you lose, 24 ounces of water has got to come back in. That's a lot. Yeah. Love that one. Um, so, I see coffee too. Ooh, coffee. I, that's going to be something fun to go over. <laughs> well, uh, here's, I'll make a lot of friends real quick. Not the biggest fan of coffee because it is an appetite suppressant. 
Caffeine is an appetite suppressant. Uh, and everyone's like, well, that's a good thing. I'm like, well, it's not a good thing. Because if you think of appetite like a little monster that you lock in your desk drawer and he's banging on the drawer, he's banging on the drawer, eventually he gets out of the drawer and he's pissed. Mm-hmm. So your, your hunger's building in the background that you don't know about. And then when you, get, then when you finally eat, you crush food and that, that's not good. So a lot of people are like, oh, it was good all day. I, I, after lunch, I had a cup of coffee and then I didn't have to eat anything until dinner. How much dinner did you eat? That's another question. <laughs> so it also is a short-term diuretic. It doesn't really have you lose too much fluid over a 24-hour period, but right away it does. I mean, the half-life of caffeine, six to eight hours. So if you have something in the PM, by the time you go to sleep, there's still caffeine circulating. Hmm. You don't feel the buzz anymore, but it is keeping you from going to deep levels of sleep. So caffeinated drinks, I, I've heard little rumors about for every cup of coffee that you have, you should just supplement that additionally with a, another cup of water. Or is, is it more than that? Or yeah. No, I would do that. No, I'm a fan of that because I think that uh, it can only help mm-hmm. you hydrate. So I'm in. Uh, carbonated beverage is very acidic, uh, not good for your joints, can help can leach calcium from your bones and lead to osteopenia and osteoporosis. So I'm not a fan of carbonated beverages, even, even seltzers or club sodas that have no calories. Mm-hmm. I'm still not a fan. I'd rather use drink regular water. It's better for you. Alcohol, uh, again, goes directly to fat storage. You really can't burn those calories. Uh, no good can come from it. Typically, mm-hmm. I understand that right now everyone's stressed and anxiety and sometimes alcohol is needed. I, I respect that. But to drink too much uh, can lower testosterone levels in, in male athletes. So it's just not something that I would recommend, mm-hmm. but I understand its use. Do you think uh, things like that, does it affect your sleep patterns? I know we haven't touched base on sleep, and I know that's another conversation in itself, but yeah. just bringing that up. Sleep sleep is on the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to definitely, it definitely interferes with sleep, for sure. Uh, and so does the coffee. But really quick, sports drinks, I think they're fine after one hour of exercise. So if your game is going longer than an hour, I have a young man who plays tennis five to six hours a day, six days a week. After the first hour, he's off water and he's on a 50% diluted uh, sports drink. And he's drinking that to keep his electrolytes and sugar, blood sugar up. Because before uh, before me, BG, before Glenn, he was tanking. He was tanking. He just didn't feel good anymore. Of course not. How could you? And now he is absolutely performing better than he ever has. Just because, just because of that. I mean, I take a little bit of the credit, but that was a big part of it. <laughs> really quick, I wanted to show you a water chart so people can get an idea uh, based on how much you weigh. You can find out, you know, if you're 100 pounds, you know, five cups of water. These are good. These are good places to to look at something to to shoot for. I have a lot of my athletes who are not 320 pounds drinking a gallon of water a day, though. A lot of our food is salt laden. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to flush that salt out, to hydrate the, the body better, to, to lubricate the joints, um, get rid of waste, um, you know, do regular bowel movements. Sometimes you need more water. Some people are sweaters. If mm-hmm. you, you, know, some, you, know, you know that person that they can just be sitting there and they're sweating all the time. And if they exercise, they're sweating even more profusely. They have to drink even more water. So again, that's why the weights before and after exercise sometimes are a very big help to me. How do you feel? Uh, so what's your recommendation in regards to like that chart? Absolutely amazing. Love to see that that way. Um, but for people that maybe aren't drinking a lot of water that are drinking some of the wrong drinks at this point, um, what are some strategies that you feel like would be easily uh, implemented to increase them to whatever they have here or whatever is being recommended here. I know yet again, Rome not built in a day. We have to build towards it. How do we get there? What are some strategies? I mean, some of the strategies could be, like I said, just drink a glass of water at every meal. If you're drinking, eating five meals a day, maybe have just a glass there, have a water bottle and know how many of these you need to have to finish in a day. There's a lot of little tricks and tips that you can just start doing it. Because it's important. So some people say they don't like water. I'm like, it's not that you don't like it. There's nothing to like or dislike. It doesn't taste. If your water tastes, it's a bad water. Um, but you don't have to love it. It's not about, oh man, 
This water was delicious. Just drink it because we need to. What is your goal? You have to, again, push forward. So if you don't drink any water and now you're drinking two glasses, yeah, that's a win. It's not great. It's definitely suboptimal, but it's a win. And I collect wins. I, I'm going to make sure every week you drink a little bit more. So with this page here, I'm just going to say, everybody, all those of you guys watching at home, please take a water, take a quick sip of water, and then uh, you'll feel a lot better, I promise. Glenn. There you go. There you go. Now, we talked a little bit about sleep earlier. Uh, you can hit the alcohol right now. Yeah, that's not going to help. I mean, it may help you fall asleep, the alcohol, but you're not going to get in deep levels of restorative sleep. So that's something to think about. Everyone thinks they have to be tired. Oh, I'm so tired, and I went to bed. Where, where do you think that you only have to go to bed when you're tired? It means it's too late. Again, these are warning signals from the body. I always, I always say it's like a smoke detector. Once it's going off, there's a problem. So being hungry, tired, and thirsty, it's like a smoke detector. Once, it's, once you feel that, it is suboptimal. I'm not saying it's wrong or bad. It's suboptimal, and I'm here to optimize. So you don't have to be tired. I guarantee you, and if you say you'll never fall asleep, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and you're never going to fall asleep. But if you say, I'm just going to go to bed and I'm going to sleep great, you have a better chance of going to sleep and sleeping great. Uh, a lot of people will tell me, oh, I only sleep four hours and I, I'm, I'm fine. Well, you're fine. That, that, that's fine. I'm not in the business of fine. I'm in the business of optimization, feeling great. So typically most people would need seven and a half hours of sleep. And if I have a magic wand, my athletes will sleep nine. And that means... Sometimes going to bed when your buddies and your friends are out. Okay. Okay. You know, we can go to bed at night, not in the morning, not after midnight. What would your take on breaking up the sleep? Like me being a new father, have a newborn upstairs, hopefully being put to bed right now. Hopefully she's sleeping. I'm hoping and praying right now. Um, but like, especially when the early stages sleep may not be pretty consistent. So what's your take on naps or, um, kind of staging it out to equal out to these numbers. You're in a separate world, my friend. You're in a world of hurt. At least for three months, it's going to be tough, and you sleep whenever you can get it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the survival thing. But we're, you know, that's not the. That's not going to be long term. She'll be sleeping through the night, and, yep. and you'll be fine soon. Right now, you just have to get what you can get when you can get it. Mm -hmm. to be honest. But mm -hmm. for most people, I want them not to wake up to go to the restroom three, four times a night. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be good. So uh, in terms of uh, what, you know, people watch TV and then they shut the TV and go to sleep. No, the last thing you do is you have to go to the restroom and void your bladder. Make sure we are on zero before you go to sleep. Because mm -hmm. even if you don't wake up to go to the bathroom, if you wake up in the morning and, and have to run to the bathroom, if you have to pee that badly, you're not in deep levels of sleep. Mm -hmm. So I also go to this one because like this. So if you feel tired in the morning, these are the things that we're going to discuss and go over. Sleep hygiene. Now that means basically just uh, getting up and going to bed at the same time every day. That's critical. It's not, I understand Sunday through Thursday are easier. Friday and Saturday are harder. It's okay. I have a young man who wants to go to, um, he's going to be playing football, D1. Great. He wants to start. I said, great. Friday and Saturday night when your buddies are out or they're, they're playing Fortnite or whatever you're doing, you have to go to bed. Because if you go to bed, just numbers, 11 o'clock Sunday through Thursday, you go to bed two o'clock in the morning on Friday and Saturday, you're being jet lagged every single week. So that, that is sapping a lot of energy and strength. So creating a sleep routine, critical, because I want you to go to bed at, at, at night. So, you know, brush your teeth, read, um, Again, the blue light from your phones, that, that's stimulates you to stay awake. So that's where you put in night shift or where your blue blocker glasses. People think it's funny, but it can help you. Uh, watch those fluids. Don't drink up until, people like, I drink until I go to bed. I drink up until I go to bed. Well, you're up three times during the night. I want unbroken sleep. I need that rest for restorative sleep. Um, exercise are good. Naps, 45 minutes, maybe. But a lot of times naps will throw you out of whack too. The room should be cool. Uh, avoid the caffeine. I don't really like it, like I said. And especially if you're going to have a cup of coffee or something, just do it in the morning, not in the p.m. Sound good? Sounds great. Love it. Here we go. Some sleep recommendations. 
right there. The adult 26 to 64 is seven to nine. Six is the minimum. Don't, 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 you know, you can function. That's great. The human body is an amazing machine. You know, you can get a lot. For example, like I always use the race car as the example. You put water in the tank of a race car, it doesn't function. You can put junk food in a human body. You're going to get some performance out of it because the human body is amazing. You can sleep four hours a night and you will be able to function. But again, not the way you could. So when people rate their energy, they rank their energy overall on a one to 10 scale for me all the time. They, they don't even know how much energy they're leaving on the table because there's so much more to, that they could have. Mm -hmm. And how, yet again, your success stories that way, like when people start changing their sleep patterns, maybe start following these recommendations, how quickly do you feel like they start getting that energy that you're talking about? Within a couple of weeks. I mean, wow. it's, it's changing. I have a, a gentleman who's been working with me now you know, seven weeks. He's lost 28 pounds. And again, I don't even look to lose weight. He's gaining lean body mass. He, so he's not just... He didn't just, he lost, his body has changed more than just the 28 pounds of showing. He's lost 28 pounds of body fat. Wow, that's amazing. He was, he was, he was very big though. So it's a, his, you know, I say 0.5 is good. One is great for, per week. Mm -hmm. He was in a, he was in a much worse position than most people. Yeah. He's doing really well. So key points to remember, what you eat, critical. Most people eat the same 10 foods beige 10 foods. I get it. I want you to try new foods. You're trying to build this jigsaw puzzle. Your body is this big jigsaw puzzle and you want us to use the same 10 pieces. You can't build the whole puzzle. So, so many different vitamins and minerals and micronutrients and all these different foods. Try them. Try them. A lot of people, a lot of people have anxiety and, and, and real fear about trying new foods, but all that's going to happen is either you're going to like it, you're going to not like it, or you're going to nothing it. A lot of people just nothing with food. They didn't like it or dislike it. And then we evaluate that food and say, hey, is this something I should eat? Like if you nothing beets, the answer is yes, you should definitely eat it because they're very powerful. But if you nothing um, cucumbers, you never have to eat cucumbers. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, when to eat, try those three hour beets. That's important. Eat every three hours. So let's say I'm not really hungry for at three o'clock. So I have a half a turkey sandwich and a piece of fruit. Okay, great. That'll help intercept dinner. You're going to feel better. Blood sugars are gonna be up. It's awesome, that's a win. Speed of eating, probably the hardest thing for people to change, hardest. Um, I tell people don't preload the fork. So while you're chewing, you're not allowed to stab the fork <laughs> because everyone has eaten to pain. They eat and they go, oh. It takes 15 to 20 minutes for the stretch receptors in your stomach to stretch it sends a signal to your brain that says you're full stop eating if you wait in four minutes and 37 seconds your body doesn't even know there's food in the stomach so then you continue to eat until you feel pain you will eat at least a third less than you think you need to if you ate slowly i want people i tell people i want you to eat so slow i want you to annoy yourself <laughs> huge win huge win balance the meal protein fat and carb you need the paper, the sticks, and the logs to build that perfect fire. There's no bad. Drink water. You don't like it? It's okay. I don't care. Just drink it. It's important. You need to do it. If you're hungry, tired, or thirsty, something is suboptimal. We have to fix that. And remember, no bad foods, just degrees and better. Great. Absolutely love it. So, uh, Glenn, that was great. We're just about to get to questions. Those of you watching, um, if any questions do come up here, I've gotten a bunch of them so far. So look forward to uh, getting your take on some of these, Glenn. Um, but why don't you tell us how you can actually, how we, um, our members and people watching from home can actually get in contact with you. Sure. So we can book a nutrition evaluation. I'll be there on Tuesdays. Hmm. Great. That's my email and my direct line right to my office. Email is probably the best, but they can email, we can schedule in. Yeah, we'll, we'll forward to it that way. I, I know you've taken a couple already, met with some of our members. Yeah. Um, I've only gotten amazing feedback so far too. Uh, yet again, I think you're 
truly someone that's going to really be able to get our, not just our members, all everybody that's watching at home uh, to their specific goals, build results, maximum results for all of them. So um, and just, you really quick, questions? Just, so, just so you know, my, my motto is if you eat, I can help you. Yeah. Well, you can help me hopefully. <laughs> if you eat, I'm the guy. There we go. If you don't eat, then that's fine. I get it. I'm not for you. All right. So Glenn, uh, Dina from one of our listeners asks here, does, or how does 14 to 16 hour intermittent fasting fit in with your workouts or tennis matches? Is it better to get fuel in before a workout or a tennis match? Well, you need to fuel before both, depending on the, the time between them is, but before the workout, yes, you need to fuel. Uh, before the tennis, you need to fuel. After the workout, you need to fuel. Mm -hmm. And then after the tennis, you do. So uh, for somebody who's going to be working out and playing tennis on the same day, I definitely don't recommend intermittent fasting. I mean, mm -hmm. their goal is to perform better so they can build more muscle and burn more fat and become leaner. Uh, being intermittent fasting for 19 hours or so, you're not, you're not going to feel great. Your blood sugar is going to be low. You're not going to you definitely won't have your best tennis match or, or your personal best on your lifts. You're talking performance wise, performance wise, optimal performance is probably Correct. not recommended. Correct. Okay. So any specific recommendations uh, for Nina at home? <laughs> I would uh, <laughs> look to speak to her and, and uh, go with more of a rhythmic eating and see how she performs and how her body composition changes. Oh, good. It's, okay. it's guaranteed to uh, increase lean mass and drop body fat. Love it. Okay. Uh, another one here, Mike, how do you suggest we measure our lean body mass? I was under the impression that bioimpedance is not an accurate way to measure body fat. Well, bioelectrical impedance used to be very inaccurate and hydration dependent, um, but they've come a long way. Um, so I use calipers. Um, I use the, uh, Bioelectrical impedance that we have at the gym. I've used bod pods. Mm -hmm. They're all good. Um, I think that calipers are consistent. See, I, when I think of body comp, I don't technically care what your number is. I just want to make sure I'm consistent so I can see the, how it's trending. That's what's important. If I see the lean mass, you know, if your body fat percentage keeps going down, then, then we're winning. But yes, the old Tanita stand on the scale, they were very hydration dependent and you could you can fudge those real quick. You can go on and you drink a ton of water because electricity flows through water better. If you drink a ton of water, you're going to be leaner. If you're very dehydrated when you get on, it's going to show much higher. But they've come a long way. Uh, okay, so Rich here. Ask any recommendations that you have for electrolytes um, if they're working out for anything longer than an hour. Um, any of the sports drinks will be fine. There's plenty of um, pre pre made ones like a Gatorade, Powerade. Um, there's a, what is it, body armor. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of like uh, pills that you can throw into your water and, and go that way as well, like tablets. Um, it's really a taste thing. As long as there's sugar and their electrolytes and it's NSF certified for sport uh, for, the, for the tablets, I'm in. If you like it, it'll be great taste and you'll continue to use it, that's gold. Okay. Jennifer asked, um, I think you made mention like a, like a tart juice. Um, can you go into a little bit of detail with that one? Uh, tart cherry juice. Tart cherry juice, okay. Yeah, I use that a lot for athletes um, pre and or post or before bed. Very powerful anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm as well as natural melatonin, so it's gonna help you sleep. Uh, high antioxidants, it's just really good for an athlete and you wanna keep that inflammation down. So there's certain things I use to help with inflammation, being like omega-3 fish oil, I use curcumin, different things like that. Cool. Um, and that seems to be it. It seems like he answered a couple questions during the presentation, we had a couple more here. Um, I honestly look forward to seeing you working with our members that way. Um, if those of you, you got it right on the screen here, please reach out, take advantage of your nutrition consultation uh, with Glenn here. As you see here, he's got a lot of good strategies for you, but he's mentioned multiple times. It's individualized. He's going to break it down for you based off of you, your specific goals, your specific body type. 
he said it all that way. But um, yeah, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys getting in front of him that way. Glenn, any uh, final closing remarks? No, I just don't want people to think I'm the food police. Like I said, I don't rate you, rank you, or judge you. It's not about, oh my God, you're eating pizza. And we're going to have, we can have a pizza protocol on how to eat pizza, when you're going to have it. Uh, you know, if it's, you know, the night before a game, a lot of teams will have these dinners and it'll be like uh, <laughs> penne alla vodka and chicken parm. Maybe that's not the best. Maybe you take your portion and eat it after the win. You know what I mean? That, that would be better. So again, there's no bad food. I don't, I don't think anybody should feel like, you never should feel bad about eating something that you like. Sometimes you just have to feed the soul. And I think that's important too. But I'm here to help people optimize, uh, lose body fat, have better strength, and, and just activities of daily living just become easier at that point. And you feel better about yourself. And like I said to you earlier, if you eat, I can help you. I mean, I work with kids as young as eight years old to professional athletes to, to 80 year olds. So, and everybody's completely different. There's no, you know, this is what you have to do. We have to see. What part of the country did you grow up in? What's your ethnicity? Where did your grandparents come from? Because that tells me all a lot about the foods that make you feel good and comfort you. And those are the foods you're gonna be drawn to. So those are all very important things. So like you said, I'm gonna be there on Tuesdays. The, the first session is included with their membership. So you should definitely take advantage, take advantage of it. It's only, and, and the more you get in front of a fitness professional, um, especially now, if you're literally ready, ready to make the commitment, ready to make a change, ready to hit some of these goals that you've been wanting to hit for a while, or you just want to get back to where you were, getting in front of a fitness professional, meeting with Glenn, um, taking advantage of the amazing classes that we do offer here at Chelsea Piers, meeting with one of our trainers here. It's absolutely amazing. It's only going to help working with a fitness professional. They're going to give you great insight. You're going to learn something. Um, and hopefully, yeah, we have you take that next step, plain and simple. Cool. Well, um, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Um, it was great. You, this is not the last that you're going to see a Glenn. I can assure you we're going to have him on a lot here. Very excited to uh, pick his brain a little bit more. Uh, anybody that does have ideas that they want to see on webinars like this, please send it in. Yet again, we're always, we're here for you guys. We're here to um, give you guys information, help you guys as much as possible. So please send it in. Any feedback you got, any additional questions, send it right to Glenn's email. He can gladly answer it via email or yet again, if you guys want to talk in person, that'd be optimal. So thank you for tuning in. Um, and then, yeah, have a great night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.